You guys, I could not be more excited about this week of videos. So we're starting today out as a series of videos uh, just on which gun I should bring elk hunting. Um, and we have some sweet guns to test. I'm so excited about these. So this is looking, some of them in the more affordable category, but a little bit more premium of rifles. Uh, we're gonna start today with a review of the Savage 110 Ultralight. <laughs> some of you are wondering right now, didn't Ricky and Jim already review the Savage 110 Ultralight? And yes, we did. But, but this is not ultralight. <laughs> no, this is the Savage 110 Switchback Edition. Um, this is an, a Sportsman's Warehouse exclusive, and it's the cheapest version of the Savage 110. Yeah. They got a whole bunch of different versions. And it's like a lot heavier. <laughs> yeah. And frankly, we didn't like that gun. No, we didn't. But we heard from so many of you guys that said, you've got to give the Savage 110 another chance. It's a great gun. I think you got just the cheapo version of it. There's some good ones. And so when we were walking through Cabela's and we saw this new version of the Savage 110, that's worth a review. I mean, look at the thing. It's incredible. Gosh, it's so good. <laughs> I really do love this gun. This is it. This is the Savage 110 Ultralight. So Savage 110 has been around forever, years and years, right? But this Ultralight model um, is new. This barrel from Proof Research is just, ah, the Proof Research has really made a name for themselves and so I'm excited to shoot that. Also, it comes with this cool multi-cam uh, camo pattern on the stock, which this is brand new, and it doesn't come in all of their all of the calibers that they offer the Savage 110 in. Um, got your fluted bolt in here. It's light as anything. Let's put this thing through the paces and see how she shoots. So we talked about the weight. I mean, it's called the ultralight, and it is ultra light. Um, but I'm very interested in the balance uh, on the guns and it just feels perfect. Um, with the carbon barrel, it's not front heavy at all, but it's not back heavy either with uh, more of just a polymer stock. You know, they didn't go to a carbon right. uh, stock on this thing. Um, so I, I felt like the balance was quite nice. And when it. you say balance, I mean, saw in, out in the field. Holding this steady mm -hmm. was surprisingly easy. Mm -hmm. Just, I mean, you would think with a real heavy gun sitting on the bag, that would be better. Mm -hmm. But this gun, I mean, man, I was able to hold it so steady. And I think that feeds into the accuracy. And I think that's, that's relevant for sure. Uh, for example, the Kimber Mountain Ascent. Um, I actually had a hard time holding steady with this gun. Right. Um, it's also very light, mm -hmm. but there's just something about it, a little bit more reach to the trigger, um, less of a flat bottom on the stock. I just had a hard time holding yeah. it, even you know on bags on a very steady rest. So I was really happy with that. Another thing that aids in that is this AccuFit stock. Um, so Savage is known for this. That when you buy the gun, you get uh, extra cheek pieces so that you can rise this up and you get extra pieces that you can slip in here to extend uh, your pull your pull length as well as you can obviously shrink the pull length if you're you know small framed or giving this to a youth shooter or something like that all right so we got our mat laid out here um side note we had been shoot using come here look at this 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 thing was expensive caldwell I think it's called the Rock BR. What a load of junk. The bag tore and ripped up like, not kidding, on the third shot. Uh, it had some pieces here that just kind of riding around in the truck just rattled loose and we lost. Uh, this is a hundred dollar piece of trash. Very disappointed uh, in Caldwell from this product. That is a hundred dollars that wore out really quick. So I just got this sandbag, just not anything special, just a sandbag that you know has a nice spot here for the rifle to go in for the front bag. Man, I can hold steadier on this than I could on that Caldwell thing anyway. Um, so I've just been moving to this, it's been really nice. So we've set up for 100 yards. This range is great, it's only like a few minutes from our office. 
so we can quick get out here. I'm gonna quick bore sight. So we have a video on how to bore sight, but essentially we're just taking out the bolt, which on a Savage is a pain in the rear. <laughs> um, you gotta fire it, keep it pulled down, and get to the back. There's that. Oh yeah, and then the, the bolt releases here, so you got to do this with two hands. You got to keep the trigger pulled and the bolt release right here, and then it's still. Uh, I hate that about savages. So we have two different loads. We have Barnes LRX and we have uh, Burger Hybrid Hunters, 140 grain and 130 grain. My guess is the burgers are going to shoot better. Burgers are usually real, real accurate. But these, this LRX, I mean, that's what you're going to want for an elk hunt. This is good television. I can't get the box open. And now we'll see how it actually does. coming up on the target 100 yards out it looks like we put two through the same hole here I just can't tell on that one if that's two in there or not I think it put two through the same hole two through the same hole I accept all right initial impressions so far are looking dang impressive on the accuracy. One thing I did notice though, when I just chuck a bullet in there, it just goes, no problems. The magazine, uh, it's got this rubber or this plastic little, doesn't look terribly strong, but it's a metal box on it. Single stack magazine, so I'm guessing you're holding three in here, but we'll have to look that up. little funky to try to push it up in there but it seems to feed really really well so far the feeding on this was just so good i will highlight the one hiccup i had just you know throwing a bullet in there um a couple times if the tip gets pointed down a little bit it kind of sticks mm -hmm. um, that did happen a few times so throw and go it's it not feeds just really well from the magazine from the magazine is amazing mm -hmm. Especially after the Savage 110 switchback. Right. I don't know if they aren't doing all the polishing or whatever, or this one we just got a little bit of a lemon, but that thing feeds a lot better than this. <laughs> and they're both Savage 110, just different yes. editions. So pretty amazing. All right, we just roughly sighted in. We let the gun cool down for a minute. And now these five bullets are going to make our first group. We'll see how it does. I'm gonna take that for out of the box accuracy, five shots with the very first load we try. Let's go look. We made a nice little daisy chain right here of four, and then that's number five. Uh, we'll measure it, but I'm sure that's gotta be inside an inch. Uh, but again, that's out of the box, no break in, and first load we've tried. And one of the things that's helping with accuracy is that AccuTrigger. Yeah. What did you think of that? I haven't shot the IQ trigger a lot, but I liked it. It had a very, very clean break on it. It's also a nice light trigger right out of the box. Yeah, it is. Um, and you can adjust it down from, from sure. where it is. Not all Savages come with the IQ trigger. Um, the cheap Savage axis that we did in the guns under $350. Nope. It's a different trigger. Um, but most of the Savages do have it, and it's a well-regarded trigger. It's a good trigger for sure. All right, here we go. There's the burger. Hybrid Hunter. See how we do. All right, we'll measure that one, but it looks like it's a bit over about two inches. Um, just didn't like that ammo. So we're by no means ready to just give a review of this. We're gonna do a bunch more shooting um, and try both rounds again, see how it does. 
shoot it hot, shoot it cold before we make any judgments. But overall, it's like in the barn so far. We'll see how it does as we continue to shoot it. But initial impressions, it's really impressive. Also, it's a, you know, it's only a 270. It's not like, you know, shooting a 700 Nitro or anything. But uh, no muzzle brake, and it just feels really mild, no problem at all. All right, so one of the things that Proof Research always talks about on their barrels is their unique pattern. Uh, you'll see on the barrel here, it's this really cool weave here, right? Um, they say that that's functional and not an aesthetic choice, even though it does look really cool. Uh, but it's to help to dissipate the heat. Um, and you get a really thick barrel, uh, but a light one with going with carbon fiber. So we're going to test how well this gun does with heating up. I'm going to shoot five three-shot groups right in a row. So I'm going to start at the top left, top right, middle, bottom left, bottom right, and we'll see if the groups start to open up as we go. All right, we just took the shots. I screwed up the first group, so it's hard to really tell anything, but there's certainly no trend toward, you know, opening up as we shot a lot, but 15 shots in very quick succession. It's warm to the touch, but just warm. So that's dang impressive. Uh, we shot a lot of groups. Now, I, a quick side note, a, a lot of you have kind of asked like how exactly we're doing our accuracy testing. I wish we could have just a fixed test of exactly how it happens, but there's a lot of artistry to uh, determining the accuracy of a gun. For example, I keep referring to the Kimber, uh, but it's just a unique gun. It's got a super thin barrel, and so it heats up so fast. Right. And so is the gun extremely accurate? Well, yeah. If we talk about shots. cold bore, <laughs> yes, if we talk about second and third, but then it starts kicking them out wild because that gun starts heating up. This one, you could shoot five, seven shot groups and I think you'd show something pretty darn impressive. Um, in fact, we took the you know three shot groups multiple times and uh, saw it and there was no opening up of the groups after it was essentially 15 shots in very quick succession and they were right in there. They didn't In fact, the up. best of those five groups was the fourth of mm -hmm. the five groups. Well, <laughs> shots nine through twelve an were, inch. Uh, and and you mentioned the the load itself, right? Mm -hmm. And the the actual round that you're shooting with the burger ammo, it opened up. I mean, you the, not very good. It wasn't a very good group, but with the barns, just tack driver shooting through the same hole multiple times, mm -hmm. and so um, that's another thing to keep in mind with the accuracy testing. I mean, just about every gun for sale right now says it's sub MOA. Right. This one is way sub MOA like nearly every time. Yeah. I, I was extremely impressed with the accuracy of this gun. This doesn't feel anything like the Savage Axis. This doesn't feel anything like the Savage 110 switchback. This is a different caliber of gun. Now we have a nice uh, Tang safety Tang in the back, which I appreciate. That's my favorite kind of safety is just back and forward, right there with your thumb. I, I really, really like that a lot. Um, as far as um, feeding, I did also have the issue where there's kind of a hump in the front, in the middle, and so it's kind of hard to get it in for the toss it in and shoot. Also right. the magazine. It's a little stiff to get in A little in stiff out. to get in and out, and it's got a very weak little plastic piece here. Right it's like fine, it's metal on the sides. That's not the piece I was concerned about. It's this little clasp that I think is the problem that needed to be metal, if anything, on this. Um, so that uh, maybe isn't my favorite, but again, we're talking about pretty small stuff. Now, one note is the chamberings for this gun. Um, it's not available in as wide an array of chamberings as some of the other Savage 110s are. Uh, probably because it's very, very light. You know, you don't want to put right. a 300 PRC or something in this gun. 
Um, this is 270 and 270 is an, obviously an amazing caliber. For $1,200, and that's expensive, I get it, but for a $1,200 gun, it looks, feels, and definitely shoots like a much more expensive gun. So in the end, who should buy this gun? Who do you think it's for? Who do you think it's not for? Well, obviously it's not for the hyper budget, budget conscious. Yeah, it's um, 1200 bucks. This is definitely a step up from um, what I would say a lot of people should take out hunting. Um, but frankly, this is a fantastic gun for backwoods given how light it is. Definitely. Um, especially that backwoods hunter who wants to be able to shoot more than three times without the barrel heating up and having flyers. And so um, for me, if I were going backwoods, this is probably the gun I'm taking. I like it a lot. There are uh, some really capable guns that we have in this series of uh, which gun yeah, you guys want me tough. to take on the elk <laughs> hunt. Um, this one is one of the more reasonable uh, price point uh, guns, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm dang impressed.